Hello, my name is Mahendra. I am a course TA and I am a PhD student working with Dr. Ganapati Krishnamurti. I will be continuing with the next session of where Ganapati sir left. So, I will be uh, describing about the data set. For our challenge, we used three publicly available data sets. They are the ACDC challenge data set, the Stackham and the Kegel data science challenge data set. In the ACDC data set, uh, we were provided with 100 CNMRA cases and for the task of segmentation, we were given the ground truth annotations for the left ventricle, right ventricle and the myocardium. And these annotations were provided at end systole and end diastole and also the MR cases involved 5 groups of patients, namely the normal the dilated cardiomyopathy and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and myocardial infarction and abnormal right ventricle. For validating our algorithm, they provided us with 50 CINI MRI cases. Similarly, in the STACM data, they also provided us with 100 CINI MRI cases and two groups of patient categories were involved and the testing set was even 100 here. This Kegel data science ball is an annual challenge hosted. Uh, it on various medical problems. So, in 2016, they hosted a challenge for predicting the volumes of the ventricles in systole and diastole. They, their training set involved 700 CINI MRI cases and here no annotations were provided, but instead only the reference volumes at systole and diastole provided. So, I would be uh, visual, visual description of the results I would be presenting to you of our model. So, you could see here this is our input image and this is the ground truth. Ground truth means the segmentation contours drawn by the radiologist and this is the prediction from our model. We can see that uh, at a particular case of normal and at end diastole phase, the slices are taken from the apex till the base. We can see the our prediction model has very close similarity with uh, the ground truth and even in the systole case, I am showing the results. Uh, the one of the challenges in sec cardiac segmentation is the segmentation at the topmost and the bottommost slices of the heart, mainly the basal slice which are close to the arteries and the apical slice which are close to the end of the heart. So, these are very difficult uh, regions to segment. We can see here, these are mispredictions seen here. The Our model does very well in predicting the mid slice region of the heart. We could see here in the prediction and the ground truth. And when it comes to apex slices, because of the small region, it is quite ambiguous sometimes to clearly demarcate the apical sections. Uh, in the ACDC challenge test set, our model gave a, comparative, a competitive result and we stood second in the challenge and uh, the metrics used were both clinical as well as uh, clin geometric metrics. The clinical metrics included the ejection fraction, the volumes at ED and ES and the geometrical metrics were die score and host of distance. So, Using this metrics, they evaluated our segmentation performance. We could see that uh, in the left ventricle, we stood a rank of 2 and in the right ventricle, we had a rank of 3 and in the myocardial segmentation, we had a rank of 2. Our overall ranking was second in this challenge and uh, the results uh, are compared with the other participants of the challenge. Even in the Stackham challenge, we achieved a fairly competitive results. Our method was fully automatic and uh, we were on state of par with the other techniques. Uh, the metric used was for Jacquard index. We could clearly see here that uh, even our model had uh, slightly lower predictions for the apex and the base slices. Whereas, in the mid slice, uh, the predictions were really good. Uh, in case of Kegel uh, data set, we did not use any training data set from the Kegel. Instead, we used our ACDC model trained on the ACDC data set for directly testing on the Kegel test set. They used uh, a continuous rank probability score, which is defined in the formula below. 
this gives us a score based on the pr pr predicted distribution of the actual volume. So, our score was around 0 0.0127 which uh, gave us a position of 10th in the actual challenge. So, I will be discussing the next part of our uh, work it is the automated diagnosis. In the ACDC challenge the task involved two steps one is the segmentation as well as the automated cardiac di diagnosis. Once the segmentations were got from the cardiac MRI we used them to predict the disease of the heart. As I previously mentioned in the data set there are 5 patient categories they were uh, described as uh, shown in the figure now. So, in the normal heart is given here and it is compared with the dilated cardiomyopathy we can see in the DCM the walls are thin and the ventricles are dilated. In the abnormal right ventricle the ventricle regions are enlarged here in the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy uh, the walls of the myocardium are thickened. Uh, in case of infarction certain regions of the myocardial segments get thin compared to the rest of the myocardium region. So, these were the 5 patient categories given in the ACDC data set. Uh, the objective was to develop an automated algorithm which does the classification. So, this is our diagnosis pipeline. So, any machine learning algorithm has certain steps in the first very step here was extracting the features. So, from the segmentation we extracted the features uh, we basically categorize the features into two groups primary and the derived. The primary features are like the volume of the ventricles and the mass of the myocardium and also the wall thickness of the myocardium at each slice and the derived features are something you derive from the primary features like the ejection fraction of the left ventricle and the right ventricle, the ratios of the volumes of the ventricles and estimating the standard deviation of the myocardial wall thickness measures within a slice and across the slice. So, the pipeline is explained here as follows. The first step involves from the cardiac MRI the segmentation. We used our uh, segmentation model to get the segmentations from the cardiac MRI we used feature extractions module to extract features. The features extracted are described in the next slide and uh, we classic we group the training set into training set and validation set. This split was done for our uh, model uh, selection mainly we had to pick the best classifier for uh, training our uh, algorithm to classify into 5 classes as well as for tuning the hyperparameters. So, the pre-processing involved feature selection as well as feature scaling and training the classifiers and tuning the hyperparameters and doing the model selection. So, we used 5 fold cross validation for uh, model selection as well as uh, feature selection and, fe and uh, hyperparameter tuning. Based on the 5 fold cross validation we found that uh, uh, ensemble system does very good in predicting the disease group. So, we developed a two stage model in the first stage it was a aggregation of 4 classifiers each classifier was trained independently on all the 5 uh, patient categories using all the features and uh, we found that these 4 classifiers uh, gave the very best uh, results individually. So, we grouped them and each classifier output was taken and a majority vote was done to get the final prediction from the first stage of the diagnosis. After the first stage of diagnosis we pass to the second stage we observed that in certain uh, patient categories like in the infarction and the dilated cardiomyopathy which are closely related groups it was quite difficult to discern uh, the disease category. So, we had to develop a expert classifier we found out that MLP does the best job for this task and it was trained on a subset of features used for training the uh, these 4 classifiers. We found that the myocardial wall thickness profile features at end systole were sufficient to properly segregate between these 2 classes. So, the 2 stage implementation is something like this we use the first stage to get 5 class prediction and in the second stage we have a refinement 
to correct some of the misclassifications. So, the final classification was one of the five categories here. So, this slide lists some of the features used for our training. So, as I told uh, the volume features, the ejection fraction, the volume ratios and the myocardial wall thickness variation profile was captured using uh, various pa methods like finding the max of the mean of the standard deviation and the variation across the short axis, long axis. We also used random forest to select features. Uh, we can use random forest classifier for doing feature selection. So, this is our one use case of using random forest classifier. So, as I told we had a two stage uh, diagnosis. In the second stage uh, we had to figure out what are the relevant features for grouping the patient cases between infarction and the DCM. So, we observed that uh, random forest showed us these are the important features at the end systole phase which are sufficient to segregate into two classes. In the challenge uh, our method achieved an accuracy of 100 percent and uh, this is attributed to our two stage uh, classification. I can clearly show you uh, how this uh, method was effective. So, in the first stage our classifier gave an overall accuracy of 92 percent. We could see there were misclassification in the DCM and MNF. Even in the confusion matrix we could see some of the groups uh, were uh, misclassified among DCM and MNF only. So, upon the second stage all these misclassifications were corrected and we are able to achieve a 100 percent accuracy. So, the paper concludes as follows. We actually developed a very parameter and memory efficient 2D multi scale FCN based on residual dense nets and uh, we showed our novel ness in weighting scheme used for combining the cross entropy and dice loss. We achieved state of art performance on two challenging se cardiac segmentation tasks. We also handcrafted a novel features for cardiac disease diagnosis and we achieved a state of art performance on automated cardiac disease diagnosis. Uh, I would like to add one more point here. Our loss function uh, was comp compared to other standard loss gave better uh, visual appearance we could clearly see here. These are the standard loss like cross entropy, weighted cross entropy, dice loss and uh, weighting scheme used by our method. So, we could see that when compared to ground truth our model had a better visual appearance compared to other loss functions. So, hence gave a better performance compared to other losses. We have uploaded our source code online so that uh, people can take benefit of it and uh, I urge you to look into this code because many examples in TensorFlow has been used, uh, sklearn has been used. Uh, this link would be posted in the announcement section. Uh, please look into it. I will briefly give a walkthrough of the code so that you can find it easier to run in your system. So, most of the codes these days uh, are up uh, with the research papers are coming up with the codes and they are uploaded in GitHub. GitHub is a common uh, platform where many uh, projects can be developed in collaboration and it can be shared to the world. So, our papers code is uh, put up in the GitHub profile. Uh, the instructions for using the code has in also been put up here and uh, the method to train and test and validate is also given here. I will just give you an overview of how this uh, code is been organized. So, basically any, any uh, deep CNN work involves preparing the data, loading the data, preparing the model, the neural network architecture and uh, developing some estimators for uh, analyzing while training like the loss function, uh, the metrics for uh, finding out the accuracy of the model. These are the groups, mod these are the modules in our code. To start off uh, we have to pre-process the data. Uh, this module data pre-process has all the codes for pre-processing the raw data. When I say this cardiac data it comes in a nifty format. These are 
very specific uh, medical image formats which might not be efficient to directly process uh, for a neural network. So, we need to actually extract the data, uh, extract the data, extract some of the uh, information, pre-process them. All this uh, have been uh, given in this uh, source file. All these are self-explanatory, I urge you to walk through it. I will just give you an intro on to what this module does. Basically, uh, the medical images are NumPy formats, uh, no nifty formats and these need to be converted into numerical uh, Python format NumPy. So, in NumPy we can do various mathematical operations for easy and faster processing. So, basically the cardiac data set as explained, it is a 4D volume, a 4D stack. So, at each phase of the cardiac is a 3D volume and each phase is a time point. So, it is aggregation of uh, a time series of volume data. So, we need to extract relevant uh, slices where annotations are there and uh, these slices need to be converted into suitable format and this is this code does that. Basically, we also need to pre-process to extract the ROI center. The code for ROI center detection is in this file, uh, the extract ROI FFT based methods. The codes are self explanatory, you can look into it and uh, reading and writing. And also one more thing is that these files have to be converted into proper formats like HP5 format or HDFI file format for faster processing. The second step here is. Uh, preparation of the data loading. As I previously discussed, uh, most of the neural networks are trained on uh, batches of the data and to enhance the data set even the augmentations are performed. This module does the uh, two tasks. When you need to feed the network with the data, it takes relevant files from the pre-processing uh, and the pre-processing like augmentation and uh, uh, deformations are done in this file and also the normalization. The loader basically uh, from the pre-processed files, it extract the relevant uh, images, prepares batches and these batches are passed through a pre-processing module where the augmentation such as uh, deformation, rotations are done, also the normalization is done and these are fed to the neural network. In this model module, we define most of the TensorFlow's uh, architecture. We use TensorFlow to build our, uh, our network. So, this is our uh, object where we, have, where we define our neural network architecture. So, we develop everything using TensorFlow layers module and uh, the lower primitive functions are developed in this uh, file called network.ops. So, where we have developed basic building blocks for building our neural network and all these things you can look into it for further understanding. So, how the dense blocks are developed, how the layers are defined, all these things you can look into these two files. Once the models are developed, we need to have a proper estimator. The estimator is something like uh, which, which is a bridge between the data loading as well as the model as well as estimating the statistics while training is happening. So, here in the estimator there is a config file and the train.py file and the estimator file. The config file is file where uh, we uh, configure some of the hyperparameters like what is the batch size, what are the number of classes, number of epochs to be trained, what is the learning rate, all and where is the data located, all these things are configured in the config file. And uh, after the configuration is done, we have the train.py file where we configure the model architectures, model hyperparameters like the growth rate, number of layers and the weight decay, dropout, all these things are configured in the train.py. And this is the main file which we need to run for uh, to initiate the training procedure. This is the 
estimator file where we estimate uh, while uh, training uh, what is the loss, how is the training progressing and also the tensor board functions are implemented in this file. Tensor board is another uh, tool which you can use it to visualize uh, uh, to see how the training is progressing. You can see live updates of the loss as well as how the live predictions are happening on the training and validation set. Once the segmentation model is trained, we can use our uh, testing module to test our segmentation uh, results. We can also upload our uh, test uh, results in the website of the challenge where they are uh, evaluating our model. The second part is the cardiac diagnosis, I am walking through this code. Once the segmentations are done, uh, we can run this generate.cardiac features file. This file has uh, functions to read the segmentation mask, from the segmentation mask various uh, features as described uh, in the previous slides have, are extracted and these are saved in a CSV file. Uh, this CSV file is used for uh, training our classifier. In the stage 1 and the stage 2 diagnosis, we have classifier selection using cross validation studies. So, basically we have used all sklearn uh, functions uh, to implement our classifiers here. So, here what we do is we read the CSV file and we do 5 fold cross validation study and we do the classifier selection and uh, training of the model on the training set. Once the training is done, we can use the trained model on the testing set. The stage 2 diagnosis does the similar operation, but here uh, the problem is limited to diagnosis or the correction between the DCM as well as MINF cases. Once this uh, file is run, uh, we get the final prediction results in the prediction folder where we get the prediction of each Cine MRI volume as either normal or any one of the four pathologies of the heart. You can check this uh, model uh, by running in your system and you can also get a feel of uh, uh, by tuning these parameters or playing around with the classifiers. You can upload in the challenge website and get a feedback of whatever results you have got. Thank you.